Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Christian Mehta, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as your MC for this very, very special 2023 Alumni Achievement Awards. Before we begin, I want to pay my respects to the Indigenous peoples, elders, and ancestors who stewarded and cared for this land, its nature, and each other, generations before European contact. At Toronto Metropolitan University, we have made a deep and long-lasting commitment to truth and reconciliation. And I invite you to learn more about this work every day, in person, online, and any time you are here on our campus. This year, 2023, we mark a triple milestone. The 75th anniversary as a school, the 30th anniversary as a university, and the first as Toronto Metropolitan University. But guess what? We are also marking the 25th anniversary of this very awards program. During all of those years, the AAAs have shone a light on over 100 alumni who have changed the course of the city, our country, and indeed our world. Yes, TMU's faculty, staff, students, and alumni, collectively 300,000 strong now, all share a distinct commitment to change and to create. Whether that is taking a complex idea to transform the urban landscape or exposing an injustice so everyone can win, whether that's drawing on a creative talent to show the complexity of human nature or leading a team to create spaces where an impossible dream becomes a reality. The alumni we are honoring tonight are joining a growing community of change makers, city builders, risk takers, and problem solvers. And we are delighted, thrilled, that many of our past recipients are here tonight to welcome this year's inductees into the fold. If you are a previous recipient of a AAA award, please stand so we can give you the round of applause you deserve. I would also like to acknowledge the year-round support we receive from our partners, TD Insurance and Manulife. Let's give them a round of applause. We know we have some of you from both organizations here tonight. Your commitment to building the TMU community is truly remarkable and we are so grateful. I now have the pleasure to call up President Mohamed Leshemi of TMU to welcome you all this evening. Thank you very much, uh, Kirshen, and uh, my congratulations to tonight's award recipients. You are all wonderful examples of the TMU spirit in action. In his introduction, Kirshen mentioned our triple anniversary this year. These are significant milestones for our university, and we are proud to celebrate them with our community. It is some what of a tradition at our university to honor our proud past by reminding ourselves for the future. And that continues. A few months ago, we graduated our first, very first class from the Lincoln Alexander School of Law. And in less than two years, we will welcome our first class of medical school students. I have no doubt 
that few years from now, we will have alumni achievement awards ceremonies celebrating graduates from these two new schools. Change is the norm at your alma mater. Something that will never change is our commitment to providing students with an education that prepares them for the future, whether that future might be. That's important because as alumni, the value of your degree depends on how your alma mater adapts and grows to meet current needs. University earns its reputation over years and decades. You can be sure that the same commitment to relevance and excellence that brought you here, whether that was 40, four or 40 years ago, it is vital as ever. My congratulations to the award recipients tonight. We are so proud to, for you to choose this university and to be part of the TMU family. Please enjoy this great evening and congratulations again. Thank you, Mohammed. I would now like to invite alumna and vice chair of the Board of Governors, Catherine Paisley, to join President Lashemi on stage. Ka yes. Catherine is the Vice President of Strategic Initiatives at the Ontario Science Centre. She began serving on the University's Board of Governors in 2016 as an alumni representative and was elected to the role of Vice Chair in 2022. Catherine was a member of the University's Alumni Association Board from 2018 to 2020 and currently sits on the Faculty of Sciences Dean's Advisory Council. Nice to have you here, Catherine. All right, great. Our first recipient, are you ready? Are you all, no, are you ready? All right, good. Our first recipients are the Isidore Sharp Outstanding Recent Graduate Inductees. Danny Gomez Ortega. Let me read my part, and then you can do that again. <laughs> Danny is an, an inclusion champion with a passion for empowering others to create more inclusive spaces. She has built community and led inclusion across various sectors for 10 years, including in post-secondary and retail and not-for-profit. Currently, Danny works as a global diversity, equity, inclusion leader at McCain Foods, where she collaborates with teams across the world to drive inclusion. She also sits on the board of Dignity Network Canada, an organization committed to advancing inclusion of 2S LGBTQ plus people globally. Danny has won multiple awards for her work and was featured in the book Global Changemakers for a Feminist Future by the renowned Dr. Gail Kimball. Watch this video. Being inclusive, it's not about being politically correct, and it's not even about being nice. People are losing their lives every day because they're actively being excluded from jobs, from healthcare, from education. Being inclusive really is about keeping people alive. I grew up in a very traditional conservative household, and so that forced me to grow up in fear, in shame. I ended up being hospitalized for a month for depression. And it wasn't until this moment that I realized the power of allyship. People stood up for me at work, letting me know that they love me regardless of who I am. At that moment, allies kept me alive. From TMU to Lobla to now McCain Foods, my goal has been to make this world a little bit more inclusive, to bring joy and to bring life. I recently led a trans inclusion session with the community in America. That going into it, I was quite nervous. However, they could not have been more receptive. I've learned that it's not that people want to be exclusive, 
It's just that they might not have the information to be inclusive in the first place. People want to know how to be better neighbors. People want to know how to be better colleagues. My hope for the future is that people like me are able to show large businesses the potential they have to do good, to touch communities across the globe. I know that when I talk to one person, that person shares lessons with their families, and then their family shares what they learn at the dinner table with other people. One conversation has the power to transform a whole community. How about a standing ovation for Danny Gomez Ortega? Can you hear me? This is good? Great, awesome, thank you. Every day, somewhere in the world, a transgender person loses their life because of exclusion. The people we have lost were supposed to be future nurses, social workers, teachers. And they were supposed to be here receiving this honor. However, they're not because the world is so cruel to us. However, Having one supportive person in a trans person's life decreases suicide attempts by 40%. I'll repeat that. Having one supportive person in a trans person's life decreases suicide attempts by 40%. I have been lucky enough to not have one or two or three, but a whole village behind me in my life. People from that village are here today. That includes bosses, teachers, friends, chosen family, people who gave me a chance to grow, people who saw me for me, people who love me. And this win is not just my win, but it is a win for the village that has been behind me this whole time. I want to walk away today by encouraging you and asking you to please help create a world where trans people have the support they need. I am proof that with the right support, you can not only survive, but thrive. So please, thank you. So please join me in this fight to ensure that trans people don't have to just survive, but thrive. And remember that when it comes to inclusion, it is not about being politically correct, it is not even about being nice, but it is about keeping people alive. Thank you for this honor, thank you. Thank you, Danny. Our next recent graduate recipient is Howie. An award-winning mixed media artist, Howie directs, devises, and designs cross-disciplinary works for stage, screen, and visual mediums. Known for rejecting categorizations, Howie amplifies overlooked themes, myths, histories, and perspectives through an unconventional, diverse lens. Career highlights include directing Mixed Up, which was aired on Out TV, devising Private Flowers during, uh, featuring TMU alumnus Rodney Diverless and Jared Wolf at the Toronto History Museums, and designing the world premiere of Edith Wharton's Shadow of a Doubt, directed by Peter Hinton Davis at the Shaw Festival. What's coming up for Howie? Well, Howie will be published by uh, Playwrights Canada Press and is directing the libretto, A Portia Cryptic, a black opera for Portia White at the Canadian Opera Company. This video is very special.
To be able to see someone, to put a lens to those whose stories may not be at the forefront of history is really important. The work that I do is often reframing stories from the past, being mixed heritage, being mixed gender. I've now been able to build a body of work that is cross-disciplinary. Media comes in many forms. It's a nod to my heritage, to my existence, that I do mixed media. This image of my great-grandmother Mary, part of its exhibition in the fall is I scale the image up and then I've used um, gold leaf to finish the detailing and I've called it my Black Athena. Our job here is to learn about who we are and TMU really allowed me to draw upon courses in like pre-colonial African history, Caribbean studies, and having this wealth of knowledge available, it deepened my practice and my work. I'm here at the Canadian Opera Company doing a new work about Portia White, who was the first African Nova Scotian to make international acclaim, but her story's been relegated to obscurity. So to be able to use this big multidisciplinary medium that opera is, we get to reframe her history. To have that many artists of color together in a space where she could not perform in her life because of how she looked is huge. And so this is my opportunity to uplift an ancestor. We stand on her shoulders. So standing ovations are a thing at the COC and they are also at TMU. Welcome, Howie. glasses on so I can see. <laughs> Hi everyone. I, um, I just want to firstly thank TMU for the incredible tapestry of knowledge that I picked up in higher education. I think um, education and mindfulness is so important right now with all the complexities that are happening in the world. I'm very, very... <laughs> Sorry. I'm very grateful to my mom and dad who are here for helping me through my education. Um, my dad will often say to me, do better for your kids than you got for yourself. And I don't, I can't imagine what more they could have given me. My time at TMU was very special. I got to do the program at the theater performance program with my sister. And, you know, it was hard. It was hard. It was fruitful. It was an incredible process to share that with her. Um, shout out to my older sister as well. And um, I just have to say there's, there's really no blueprint as artists. We sort of have to create our own paths. And I feel like that's been such a testament to my journey of finding my unique journey through the process of creating work and that has been shaped by mentors and guiding spirits along the way and probably one of the biggest spirits for me has been my husband who's also here. Peter, I love you so much and I'm very grateful to TMU. Thank you very much everyone for your support. So I have nothing more to say. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. And they're the young grads. <laughs> Our next recipients are being celebrated with the Alumni Awards of Distinction. Our first recipient is Gordon Gill. 
a fellow of the American Institute of Architects and founding partner of award-winning Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, Gordon is one of the world's most foremost exponents of performance-based architecture. With projects ranging from the world's tallest buildings to sustainable communities, Gordon's work is driven by his philosophy that there is a purposeful relationship between formal design and performance, and that there is a language of performance which is the basis of his practice. Form follows performance. Prior to founding Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture in 20, 2006, Gordon was an associate partner at Skidmore Owings and Merrill and a director of design for VOA Associates. It's a gorgeous video. When you ask most people if they close their eyes and describe the most beautiful place they've ever been, it's usually a natural setting. On the one hand, we are inextricably linked to nature. On the other hand, we almost define our species' success through technology. We endeavor to do great things. That is the pursuit to create a solution that is beneficial for both sides of that equation, how we can blend nature and technology. And that, to me, is the beauty of architecture. Architecture is really creating experiences and places for people. For example, Al Wassel is a place to bring people together. You have access to landscape and a park, and at the same time, it's enhanced by 252 projectors becoming absolutely transformative. How can you take a fantastic idea and make it real? TMU taught me how to make things real. A lot of things that we design for are invisible. We create a surface to react to light, wind, rain. 160 Front Street is actually shaped to shed the wind. The exterior wall, that texture helps. But in addition to that, by tipping the glass out, we're trying to mitigate glare, and that helps us reduce the heat load on the building. The envelope is doing many, many things. Steppenwolf is designed around the indoor-outdoor relationships. The shell is outside and then it comes inside. And there's a skylight. When it's reversed at night, it transcends indoor-outdoor. Again, it's very intimate. You're no more than 20 feet from the edge of the stage. If, if I had to work on only one thing for the rest of my life, it would be trying to solve that intersection of nature and technology. I think that's a beautiful pursuit. All right, everybody, you know what to do. Join me in welcoming Gordon Gill to the stage. Wow, um, that video is way better than <laughs> some of the things I thought I would, I would see. Um, and thank you, Sean and John, for that. Um, I wanna just congratulate um, all my fellow inductees tonight, and um, I am truly um, humbled by this distinction. Um, it's uh, been 46 years, almost five centuries since I graduated from TMU. <laughs> so Danny and Holly, you know, go, go get them, Danny and Holly, so. Um, I wanna thank um, President Lashami. Thank you so much for this honor. Um, certainly the selection committee, Christian Meda, who kind of steered us all through to tonight. Um, the Faculty of Engineering, Architectural Science, Dean Duver, who is not here, I think he's ill tonight, but I owe him a great uh, thank you. And also the chair, Lisa Landrum, and Carlo Parente, who is 
um, a fellow colleague who, who's here tonight. I also want to thank um, my three sisters who are here. Thanks. All right, our next recipient is Jules Arita Kustachin. Dr. Kustachin is Indinu Iskuin, Swampy Cree woman and a member of the Attawapiskat First Nation. Raised by her Cree-speaking grandparents in Moosonee, as well as in Ottawa with her mother, a residential school survivor and warrior. Jules is a graduate of TMU's Documentary Media Master's Program, where she was honored with an award of distinction and an academic gold medal for her thesis, Documentary Film. She completed her PhD at UBC's Institute of Gender, Race, Sexuality, and Social Justice, and her research focused on indigenous documentary practices. Jules is a proud mother of four sons, a published writer, a performance artist, an academic, and an award-winning filmmaker. She recently released two feature documentaries and is in post-production with her second scripted feature, Angela's Shadow. This video is something else. <laughs> I'm a 70s child and we watched a lot of documentaries. I was introduced to Alanisa Baumswin, her film 270 Years of Resistance. I saw this indigenous woman's voice replace the didactic white male voice in documentaries and stand up for indigenous people. There's something that shifted inside me when I saw it because I, you know, being raised by a residential school survivor and seeing what my mom was, you know, dealing with and her challenges. It was through that film that I realized that that was the work that I wanted to do. Because I have this like fire inside me, just like Alanis. There's a whole generation of us who are not speaking to what it was like being raised by survivors. The last residential school uh, closed in 1996, so it's not that long ago. We're starting to find our words and articulate what these experiences are, but we haven't done it before. With Wapake, my centralized question was, who am I without my mother's trauma? Healing is about putting it out there, and I'm using my work to heal. To see the response from the audience, I heard the laughter, I heard the sniffling. It was overwhelming. My oldest son, I have four. I was reminded that he doesn't have to carry that burden. That is how I know the cycle is broken. hope that this film ignites further discussion because I think it's timely that we talk about intergenerational trauma and healing. Representation matters in terms of being Indigenous. Storytelling is about sharing your truth. When you speak your truth, things do change. <laughs> Welcome, Jules, to the stage. prepare a speech so I was just gonna do a mic drop <laughs> just kidding <laughs> have a few glasses of wine and turn into a stand-up comedian no just kidding um, so I graduated from here a long time ago I started uh, I had four kids at home and I had a part-time job and I did the intensive film bro program I think the 12-week intensive film program and then I got into the master's program and my gosh it was incredibly difficult but, you know, um, I had such a supportive environment here. It was like the best two years of my life, and I'm totally not lying. Like, it, <laughs> it totally was amazing because 
I just got the support that I needed from the professors. They put cameras in our hands. We went out there, so it was a healthy balance between practical and theory. I don't know, and it just set me off on this amazing path about you know finding our voices and indigeneity. And I went on, you know, with four kids, I went on to do my PhD. So uh, it was just an amazing foundation. And I just want to shout out the other recipients. I just, I feel so honored to be here with you. I'm kind of fangirling a bit. I, I'm just like so in awe at all of your important work. I just want to say Chimi Gwech. And when I was here, I don't even know if we say this word, it was called Ryerson. And, um, you know, being the daughter of a residential school survivor, I think he would be turning over in his grave knowing that I graduated from this school that was named after him. So here I am, you know. So thank you for changing the name. Shimi Gwech, and uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, our next recipient is Al Ramsey. He has a few friends in the crowd, I think. <laughs> As Vice President, 2S LGBTQ Plus and Black Customer Segments at TD Bank Group, Al and his team act as a key liaison between retail, wealth, and business banking to embed segment support across the enterprise. Designing and executing innovative strategies for both communities, these programs are considered leading edge within the financial industry across North America. Originally from Jamaica, I knew that would happen. <laughs> Al and his family moved to Canada in 1994 to start a new life and of course to complete his education. He holds a Bachelor of Commerce from TMU. Over the past 20 years in the financial industry, Al has held increasingly senior roles supporting TD's diversity and inclusion mandate leading customer, employee, and community initiatives. Let's roll this beautiful video. Visibility matters. I know people are looking for those signs to say, this is a safe space. I am very fortunate to have a platform at TD almost 19 years now. Some of my proudest memories when I knocked on Pride Toronto's door. That was in 2005. And I said, TD wants to support Pride Toronto. At the time, we became the first bank in Canada to sponsor a Pride Festival. We have had a lot of firsts. When we became the first bank to have same-sex couple in mainstream media, it's one of the largest bank in North America. Our actions and our words, they carry weight and they impact a lot of people. Now you look around, you see many, many rainbows adorn many, many storefronts. That is progress and we're proud to see that. TD supported the Black Opportunity Fund. $10 million, one of the largest contribution to a Black-led organization in Canada. Attending TMU, there was this teacher on her office door proudly displayed was the pride flag. I flourished at TMU because I found a sense of community. We have this mantra at TD, forever proud, forever Progressing. It is a never ending circular rainbow flag to ensure that these communities have financial inclusion and creating a more inclusive society in Canada for all. All right, everyone, welcome Al Ramsey to the stage. Oof. 
I agree. That was a very powerful video. And um, I hate watching myself, by the way. And um, what I was watching, and um, it gave me a lot of joy just to watch that. But equally as impressive as my fellow honorees, I feel proud and prideful to be here tonight. And actually, Christian, and um, I brought out my colors for the TMU tonight. And, um, but really, truly, a heartfelt um, thank you. Really, thank you for this prestigious award. I am deeply honored. And um, congratulations to your fangirling and fanboy and to you and to all my fellow, fellow um, honorees. The, the video, as I said, it captures really truly the essence of me about diversity and inclusion and belonging. You see about 2S LGBTQ plus in the black community, but for everybody. Everybody, that is what um, inclusion means. However, to be frank, if you had asked me 30 years ago living in rural Jamaica that I'll be standing here on this stage tonight accepting this prestigious award, I would have told you, that little boy in Jamaica would have told you that's a far-fetched dream, really. But it is my reality why I'm here today because of my family who are here with me tonight, my husband, my mom, my dad, my auntie, my second mom, I called her, my big, beautiful family. They are my heroes. That's the reason why I'm here today. And because, in my opinion, I live in the greatest nation in this world, the greatest nation in this world, and we're on a path, obviously, as we evolve as society. It is a country that gives someone like me a second generation immigrant from a working class family, the opportunity to attend one of the most prestigious universities in the world, which prepared me to succeed and become a leader in one of the largest financial institutions in America. That is why we live in Canada. However, most importantly, because I am Canadian, as a gay black man, I have the freedom to live and embrace my passion and my purpose, to simply be my authentic self and thrive. My freedoms, I will never take for granted. There are 67 countries still in this world. It's still illegal to be gay. I will never take my freedoms for granted. But finally, visibility matters. This award represents something much bigger much, much bigger than myself. It symbolizes hope, hope for future generations, especially folks from equity-seeking communities, to see the art of the possible, taking the baton from me and my fellow honorees, and they can soar much, much higher than our. Thank you very much. Our next recipient is Nora Sakija. Nora is the co-founder of and CEO of Majuri and the third generation in a family of jewelers. While she loved fine jewelry, Nora chose to pursue in industri industrial engineering at the University of Jordan. This led her to immigrate to Canada to receive her MBA at TMU and work in consulting at one of the top financial institutions in Toronto. Yet, fine jewelry was always on her mind. In 2015, Nora made the decision to leverage her learnings from the industry and her deep understanding of supply chains to create Majuri, the category-defining jewelry brand. In doing so, Nora and her team have redefined the ways individuals think of and purchase fine jewelry for themselves. Let's watch this video. Jewelry to me is a means of self-expression. I think traditional jewelry, what we're used to it, is men buying for women, high price points. We created Majuri and we flipped the narrative from traditional gifting into self-purchase to make fine jewelry part of every day and to inspire our community to celebrate what matters to them.
this is our flagship store and you come in, you want to spend time here, you want to make friends, you want to interact with the product. This Ossington store is, is dear and dear to my heart because it's in Toronto and this is where we started. I've always known that I wanted to start my own business. When you compare TMU's program, it's the most entrepreneurial. Being part of the DMZ was a great primer uh, for my entrepreneurial journey. And in 2020, we created our empowerment fund, upskilling women and non-binary people because we believe that education helps women gain more economic independence and helps women design their lives. I hear amazing stories from women that I meet, like this is my first diamond. This is the piece that I bought when I got promoted. This is the piece that I bought when I left a bad relationship. Hearing that people are using Majuri to really put memories to key milestones in their lives, for me is a form of self-expression and empowerment. Don't get up. Well, you could get up, but Nora's not here. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's uh, taken ill, so we will be sure to uh, congratulate her at another time. Um, but one round of applause for that beautiful video. All right, this year's final recipient of the evening is Rodney Yip. Rodney graduated from TMU with a degree in computer science from 1982. He retired from IBM Canada in 2015 after working in the IT industry for 33 years. A thinker and tinker by nature, Rodney enjoys working on projects that propel TMU into the future, such as the outreach programs at the Ontario Science Centre and the Maker Festival. His current TMU projects include the Indigenous Medicine Garden atop the Daphne Cockwell Health Sciences Complex, the intra, in, intra I'm going to do it. Thank you. <laughs> Medication Infusion Project and the Midwifery Program, as well as the Computational Sa Public Safety Lab within the Department of Computer Science. Rodney is a member of the Design Fabrication Zone as well as the Science Discovery Zone at TMU. Let's roll this video. As alumni, we have three things that we can give. Time, talent, and treasure. Philanthropy is not just about opening your checkbook. It's about finding things that align with your core values. I'm a tinker by nature. I like to build things. I like to create systems. I like to create opportunities. This lab is the Computational Public Safety Lab. We have search and rescue technology. We've got bomb disposal robots. This is a place where thinkers and tinkers are creating the future of public safety. I look for projects where we can make a big impact on the future. TMU is agile. Agility is critical to supporting innovation. By being agile, we can embrace new technologies, new lines of thought, new information. The cornerstone of our society is nursing. We need more nurses. By having seen and used the state-of-the-art technologies that they have access to here at TMU, that will help them integrate into the working world a lot faster and a lot better. The Indigenous Medicine Garden is about touching back to our past. When I started with the project, it was just a few plants and it grew up into a verdant green jewel uh, within the TMU campus. I hope these projects will make the world a safer place, a healthier place, a more connected place with the past, present and future. And as alumni participating in these projects, we can help forge a new future. All right, everyone. Please join me in welcoming Rodney Yip to the stage.
Well, uh, thank you very much for this award. It's been greatly appreciated. Um, GMU gave me many things. It gave me courses that I thought I would use every day throughout my working life. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave me courses that I thought I would never, ever, 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 ever use, which I put to work on the very first working assignment that I ever had. So it helped me prepare for a flexible career, an agile career, something where I could move into areas where I was interested. And it gave me a background to allow me to move quickly and effectively into those spaces. I spent the most of my career in the area of disaster recovery, business continuity, and emergency management, which had very little to do with the computer science degree that I had. But it, the TMU gave me the background in business and in computers and in um, uh, people and projects that allowed me to succeed in this space. It also gave me a sense of wonder, a sense of curiosity, and I carry those feelings with me today. I use them every day. I learn, I think, I engage, and I, I discover things, and that excites me. And I, I thank TMU for that, for instilling that excitement and curiosity in me. As I said in the video, we have three things to give, time, talent, and treasure. By engaging with the university, uh, opening up our contact lists, uh, it, making introductions that helps the university and helps students and future students. Uh, but bring talent back into the university, real life world experiences, bring that back into the university to give our students and our researchers a checkpoint as to figure, as to teach them um, what it's like in the real world. A real life experience is worth a lot of, uh, a lot of time that we need to spend with our students. Um, and finally, treasure. Now, it's not necessarily big treasure. It could be small, small awards, a small thank you gift. Uh, and that helps uh, students and researchers and helps uh, the university. And I encourage you to re-engage or engage with the university because it is a very worthwhile project and you know, uh, it gives me a new purpose in life. Uh, thank you very much and thank you for the award. Thank you, Rodney, and thank you, President Lachemi and Catherine for uh, presenting the awards to our very worthy recipients. Uh, I would like to give a little hat tip to our talented alumnus, Sean Carson, and his colleague, Johnny, who are you? where are you? Who produced all of those amazing alumni videos. Big round of applause for them. Yeah. Before I sign off and conclude the formal proceedings, I'd like to invite our Interim Vice President of Advancement to close our formal program. Rivi Frankel, please come forward. Good evening, everybody. Wasn't it inspiring to hear from and learn more about these amazing alumni? Can we have one more round of applause for all of them? This is proof positive that TMU alumni are really making an impact in culture, in industry, and in our communities. At TMU, we believe the role of the university is to help shape and empower the next generation of change agents who will make the world a better place. And tonight we celebrate seven shining examples and we know there are many, many more. We're proud of our alumni and their accomplishments and I hope you feel as proud as we do. So please enjoy one final video that demonstrates the amazing resilience of tonight's honorees. By coming to TMU, you have the opportunity to explore, to take a chance, 
to take a risk. There's no such thing as failure. The only failure is if you don't try something and don't do something. In the early days, I could have quit. I can count like a million times that I had persevered is a big badge of honor for me. We have a chance to be really brave and bold. And the risk of that is we fail. And I would rather be brave and bold about it. I don't necessarily take no for an answer. I just find another route. And you do that by knowing the rules and then breaking the rules. Getting in front of people with different opinions. Embrace tough conversations and look at them as opportunities for change. I think you know that you're onto something when someone tells you that that can't be done. Quite frankly, I think you need to be challenging yourself. If you don't put yourself in that position, then you're not growing. You are your biggest champion. Unleash whatever is inside of you. Become the person you are meant to be. Wow. What an amazing, amazing group we've honored tonight. It has been our privilege to learn a little more about these alumni and celebrate them at this very ceremony. I want to thank you all for joining us here tonight. I want to also uh, say a huge thank you to the alumni relations team at TMU. You're all right over here, and all of our colleagues in university advancement. This is no easy feat. And it is certainly amazing to see us all come together to celebrate our incredible community. I also want to acknowledge that we have a number of honorary doctorates here in the room. Uh, if you could please stand so we can say hello to you, along with our previous AAA recipients. And of course, to all of our newest inductees from 2023, please stand. So, Welcome all to the club. I want to encourage you now to stay, mingle, enjoy the great food and good company. Have a great evening, everyone. <laughs>